Let's get into specifics though. First there's the GTX 1080. This one still has 2560 CUDA cores, a 1733 megahertz boost clock, 8 gigs of 10 gigabit per second GDDR5X memory, and this will replace the GTX 980 in a laptop, so nice upgrade there. The GTX 1070 will have 2048 CUDA cores, 1645 megahertz boost clock, 8 gigabytes of 8 gigabit per second GDDR5, and it will replace the 980M. Note here it's some slight spec variance. This one actually has more CUDA cores than the desktop GTX 1070, which has 1920 CUDA cores, but it runs at a slightly lower frequency. Nvidia says that this offset on both accounts provides pretty much equivalent performance. Finally, the GTX 1060 will have 1280 CUDA cores, 1670 megahertz boost clock, six gigabytes of eight gigabit per second GDDR5, and will replace the 970M. Again, a slight variance here from the desktop specs, just about a 30 megahertz lower boost clock. If you're like me, your next question would be, can these overclock? And the answer would be yes. Uh, comparing them to the Maxwell mobile GPUs, which could overclock to maybe 80 to 120 megahertz over their reference specs, Pascal's should expect to see 200 to 300 megahertz uh, in additional overclocking headroom. The reason is they have dual FET power supplies now, which drives a lot of power in a small area, as well as a multi-phased power controller, which increases power efficiency and reduces noise. These are updates to the power delivery system with Pascal that we saw on the desktop side. Now, when it comes to overclocking, your mileage may vary, of course, based on the laptop you buy, its design, and its cooling. Also, bear in mind, there's no voltage control with the desktop 10 series GPUs. Uh, that is kind of to be expected since there's thermal limitations with the size of laptops, and the target temperature is still 83 degrees Celsius. NVIDIA did a live overclocking demo for us. It did have a couple hiccups, but they managed to get it working. Uh, they were using a GTX 1080 equipped MSI laptop, and they started out with the base clock of 1607, applied a 225 megahertz offset in MSI Afterburner that resulted in the GPU running at about 2063 while gaming. Uh, the temperature was 72 degrees Celsius, and they played Doom at 1920 by 1080 with ultra settings, open GL mode, and it resulted in a frame rate of about 120 to 140. Now since laptops have displays integrated, there are some display upgrades in the work as well. 120Hz G-Sync notebook displays at 2560 by 1440 and that's a pretty drool-worthy spec for any gaming laptop out there, although I imagine these are going to be pretty high-end and maybe pretty pricey. Either way, you do have G-Sync support, of course, uh, and when it's integrated into the laptop screen, you actually don't need that G-Sync chip, so that's pretty nice too. Now we already know that Pascal is very efficient and Nvidia claims up to 30% more battery life on Pascal based GPUs compared to Maxwell. That is a really impressive spec, especially if you like to game while unplugged. There will be a new battery boost feature integrated into the Nvidia uh, control panel that will allow you to set a max frame rate or choose between frame rate, uh, quality settings, or battery life. So lowering the settings or the resolution will translate into the GPU using less juice and giving you more battery. We should be seeing this soon with a driver update, and this will apply not just to these Pascal-based GPUs, but to all mobile GTX platforms, so that's pretty nice. As far as the laptops themselves, NVIDIA had a ton of them on display. They say they're going to be able to get them down as thin as 18 millimeters, potentially as light as 4 pounds, and they're going to be available from every conceivable major laptop manufacturer that's out there, so Gigabyte Lenovo, EVGA, Asus, MSI, HP, Razer, pretty much all of them. And of course, all of these laptops are going to be VR ready, as long as they have the proper USB and HDMI connections for the head mounted displays. One caveat is that they will need to stay plugged in, but that's still pretty nice to be able to do VR on a laptop. So if your question now is, are these laptops going to be better than my gaming desktop? And the answer would be, maybe, if you're using an older GPU. But if you're comparing the same GPU from this generation, the desktop variant will still perform better and stay cooler and have better overclocking potential, especially with that voltage control. At reference frequencies, you should expect performance that's within about 10% of the desktop variants when you're using one of these in a laptop. Finally, I want to point out that we definitely need some more independent testing and reviews of these laptops. Some of those reviews should be available now, so check the interwebs for those. More should be coming soon, but all the information provided today was directly from NVIDIA, and as we all know with marketing material, they tend to paint a pretty glowing picture of themselves. All that said though, I'm pretty excited about these full-fledged GPUs coming to laptops. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, guys, and we'll see you next time. For all of the optical discs that we use, all of them, all the optical. I need your, my magic. Uh, you need your Asus drivers to. Yes. To oh yeah. You, know, you gotta load your drivers off of the driver disc, unless you threw it away. Yeah. But you wouldn't have thrown them away because if you've been watching Linus, you know. No, Linus tells you to throw them away. Oh, that's right.
Yep. <laughs> He's the problem. You need to watch more laughs. Jeez. <laughs>